All right, we're going to get started. Um, quick announcement. Um, I've been asked that when people ask questions, please stand up because it helps with the, taking the video. To, it, otherwise, you, you can't be seen and you, your mouth can't be seen. It's either easier to understand what you're saying. So please stand up when you get the, uh, want to make a question, OK? All right, next talk is about um, NetFilter hardware offloads uh, by Pablo. Pablo's been a NetFilter maintainer for a very, very long time, doing a great job there. And he's been doing work lately to uh, uh, more abstract the uh, TC offloading infrastructure so that uh, subsystems such as NetFilter can take advantage of it as well. Uh, please give him a warm welcome. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about of the um, uh, developments that have happened on the NetFilter domain in terms of hardware offloads in the uh, in the last months. Um, yeah, I, am, I forgot to say I'm very glad to be here. So um, basically, this talk is going to be focused on on two use cases that are basically the. Um, the hardware policy offload, and there is an, a, a different use case that is basically the flow table, the contract flow table um, bypass. So um, at the end of the, of the presentation, I, I, I would propose a way to use the same infrastructure for both um, for both use cases. Um, and I also, I will explain a bit of, on the particularities of, of, of them. So um, the, I'm going to start with, um, the flow offload API, which is going to be used by these two main clients. So, um, so basically, the idea is that in order to avoid duplicated code, um, I mean, basically, on the tree, what we found before uh, the path set that got merged is that some drivers start to use to, to duplicate code to configure the offloads via the ETH tool and also TC Flower. So um, the, 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 basically, the idea was to try to find a, an unified representation for for the driver to 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 expose to expose the the rule that is going to be pushed into the hardware for the packet classification. So um, if there is a common representation both for ETH tool and also for TC, um, the drivers could take then code code could could be consolidated. And then at the same time, we would open up for more offloads, in this case for NetFilter. So it would be just relatively easy just to make the front end to transform the native representation and use this intermediate representation and then push it to, to the driver. The driver will actually, would actually not distinguish where this representation is coming from. Actually, this is going to change a long time because we want to have, as I, will, as I would explain, we will have blocks for each subsystem and every offload will be in a pipeline. So the, the, same, the same processing as in, in software will be happening. But, but so far, it's, it's, it's a bit like, no matter for one front that this is coming, this, this flow rule representation is coming, the, the drivers are going to 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 um, to place it into the drivers are going to place it into the hardware. So, the flow uh, the flow offload API is basically composed of two main objects that are the flow rule um, API, the flow rule object. This flow rule object is composed of two fields. It's one object is the flow match, and another is the flow action. The flow match allows you to uh, express uh, what you want to match on the rule. And the flow action allows you, allows you to specify what actions are going to be applied in case of matching. In case of matching, so um, um, to, to express the matching side of, of, the, of the of the rule, there was another uh, there was a representation already in place that was being used by TC Flower. So for TC Flower, this is going to be native. So we are just taking the flow this sector representation that Flower is using to express the match inside. And for the action side, this is based on the TC action. So because the, the, the initial actions that have been offloaded into hardware has been done through the TC action API, the idea has been just to um, basically start by adding an API that looks very much similar to the TC 
action API. But a long time, the plan is that probably these this two APIs, they will diverge because basically the TC action API is a front-end API. It's a software front-end API. And also, at the same time, while it's good to avoid duplicated code, in my opinion, it's also good if, if the software front-end gets decoupled from the flow rule representation in particular, because if, if, if a software developer want to introduce a new feature in the front end, it, it won't be good if, if, it, if it, he ends up being updating all over code all over the place in the drivers that are referencing data structures that are part of, of TC. So it's also, in terms, in, in terms of maintenance, it's also, I think it's, it's a good idea that we have this intermediate representation. It's basically glue code between the driver and, and, and the front end side. And the other main object is, is the flow block. I will talk also about this one. So this is a bit more of the details of what I've been talking. It's, it's basically this flow match. It's using this flow dissector object. And then that two pointers to opaque structures. These opaque structures are the mask and the key. So um, they are just using the flow dissector API, which is basically um, has a use keys um, field that is that you can use to set flags, and these flags tells what what fields in the in the flow dissector are being used. And then um, the offset is basically initialized to point to because these opaque objects are per subsystem. Um, um, these offsets are initialized to to, to the fields of these. Um, key and mask depending on, on TC or if tool or, or net filter. They are not the same these days. That could be changed at that point. But I, 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 as, as things are looking today, it's basically using the flow dissector API to represent the matching side of the rule. So one example is this um, a flow dissector key uh, ethernet address. So I, this, this allows you to match on the destination and source ethernet address. address. Um, you have both the mask and the key, so you can specify if you only want to match the source or the destination or both. Um, so this, basic, this is basically how, the, um, how, how you can express the matching side of the rule. So, and then the actions, they are, as I said, I, they are based on the TC action API. So um, there is a flow action object that contains a number of entries. This is an array of entries. And then um, each entry has an ID that identifies the, the type of actions. And then you have an union that contains all, the, all of the, the options that are all of the parameters that this, this action in particular needs. Some of the actions that are available now, one of the good things that I would say that are part of this flow rule API is and then now before before this flow rule API, you have to read all, all, all drivers in the, in the tree to guess what actions were actually available or being offloaded. Now there is a clear API, and if, if there is some of the actions that, are, that is missing, you can just add it. So there is um, a number of actions. This is just a, a, a bit of them, not all of them. But you, you can just express if you want to accept or drop the packet, if you want to redirect it or mirror it to an, a, a net device. Um, you could also um, push a VLAN, a VLAN uh, encapsulation, pop it, mangle it. There is also similar action for MPLS that has been added quite recently. There is also an action for payload mangling. There is another action for updating the checksum. Um, that usually usually comes together with the mangling action. So um, there is another action that, that is the, the tunnel action that is generic. It's basically it's it's actually rather generic, but it's it's being used by VXLAN and, and Geneve these days, which is what I've seen in the driver so far. And then there is the there is a couple of actions that were added to um, because they were needed for ETH tool that are the Waco LAN. Action and also the um, packet steering action, just to basically just to for packet steering, just to place the, the packet in the right um, in the right uh, NIC queue. So those are a bit of them. So all these um, this API comes with a with a 
with a few of helpers. There is one for TC. For TC, since um, this API is using Flower, Match is native because Flower uses the Flow Dissector API already. And then there is a, a helper that is TC setup flow action that translate the TC action to the flow rule to the flow action API. And then for, for if tool, there is a, a helper function that takes the takes basically the if tool RX um, uh, flow spec layout and it translates that that layout to the flow rule to the flow rule object. So in terms of code, you can find the, the header file is, is under include net flow offload.h, and then the, the, um, basically the, the core is placed at net core flow offload.c. There is a number of drivers already using this, uh, either for flower, now also for net filter, and some of them they are also using, using it for, for if tool, that are the QLogic and also the, the Broadcom Starfighter. Um, so, while introducing the, this API, all these drivers were translated to, to use it. Uh, the flow blog API, um, that is basically the other object. So we now have this flow rule object to express, to express the, 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 the rule that is going to be placed into the hardware. So there is another API for this flow block. Basically, the idea of the block was introduced to um, to have a way to share policies between different TC ingress queue disks. Um, so um, one TC block could be used by multiple ingress queue disks, so you don't have to duplicate the, um, the policy among different queue disks. Um, the front end has to set up this block object there are two operations that are this flow block bind and unbind. This flow block bind happens when, in the case of TC, when, um, when the block is set up. And in case of net filter, is, it happens when, um, when the base chain is created. So far in net filter, there is, only, there is only one flow block. That should read as one flow block, not TC block. That's mistaken on the third item. So it's one flow block and one net filter base chain, base chain so far. It should be possible to support more than one flow block. The idea would be to basically to allow to, for net filter base chains on the ingress hook, the idea would be to allow to specify more than one single device, something like specify a array of devices in the base chain. So all these devices could share the same policy. So no, no, no need to explicitly expose a new object in, in NetFilter for this, as it happens in TC. So, so far, um, only one of the subsystems can use this, um, can, you, can, you, can bind to, to the flow block. This means that you can, you, at, this, at this point, you, can, you have to either choose between TC or NetFilter, which is not good for anyone. So, um, but there are plans to, or at least I was told from the IVA developers that there will be code uh, landing in the tree soon to uh, um, basically to allow to create multiple blocks, one for each subsystem, and and so so you could have you could you could offload any subsystem. Also, there should be room to 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 add a block for each tool too. Um, there has been discussions on where to set up the block because there is no explicit in the in the if tool. There is no explicit way to in the, in the queue disk you set up a block in the in the in TC ingress you set up a block in that photo you set up a base chain in if tool that doesn't not exist. You just directly add a rule to the up to the um, um, to the nick. Um, how the flow block API is from this filter is basically um, there is a, a hardware offload uh, flag for base chains that is basically telling that this all the all these all the policies that are contained all the rules that are contained in these in this base chain should be placed in hardware. So it's an it's a toggle that the user um, can enable disable. 
Obviously, if the card cannot do it, it the user will just get, I don't support this. Um, so by when, by when the NetFilter base chain is created, um, the, the NDO setup TC with the flow block setup at action type um, um, and, the, and the flow block bind of, uh, type will be, will be specified and then, then um, basically the driver will, cre will create this flow block object, configure it, uh, and then pass it, pass it back to pass it back to NetFilter already ready for to be used. Then um, every time you add a rule, NetFilter iterates over the list of blocks that um, have been registered. Um, and then to remove, to, when, 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 when the user removes the NetFilter based chain, what it happens is that NetFilter first has to uh, iterate over the list of blocks and tell them to, really, to, to, the move, to, to the, remove all the rules and then release the, the flow block. So this picture shows a bit how it looks. It's so either from the from NetFilter or TC. Um, um, the idea is that um, via the NDO setup TC, they request the driver to set up the flow block, and then they get back they get back this block, and they keep the, the base chain, or. Um, on, or the, the, the Q disk, the DCQ disk ingress is going to keep a list of, of blocks that is available. So once the user push a rule into the hardware, what it happens is that either NetFilter or TC, they, they are going to transform the, the, the native representation to the flow rule API, and then they are going to iterate over the list of blocks that have been set up that basically just drive the object to the, to the driver. Um, so what is supported right now in that filter through this new flow offload API? So basically, um, um, you can offload only base chains um, on the ingress hook where you can enable this offload flag. Um, so far, all priorities that are supported for these base chains are from one to uh, to power of sixteen, um, and this is just because this is this is the priorities that has been that are these days supported by drivers because this is what TC has been supporting, has been exposing through the uh, brief option, um, and then so far only only support for accept for the accept policy, you can you can match on traffic. Um, using payload matching. You could also accept drop traffic. There is also net mask uh, matching that is going to come in the, next, in the next release. And there are also a couple of actions just basically to uh, mirror and also to redirect traffic. That is this forward action and duplicate action that will come also in the next release. Those, those are basically the actions that are supported, which is um, still behind of what TC can do. But the idea is that um, as time passes by, uh, the plan is to catch up. Um, for the payload mangling, there is also a path set on the table and there are some ongoing discussions going on. Um, so basically the flow action mangle uh, representation uses, uses the, the uh, native TCP packet edit representation. So because the, because the flow action API has been modeled um, from the TC action API, it's, it's basically taking what, what, what TC could do, to, what, what TC was using to represent packet mangling, and, and that was p-edit. And, and p-edit has a number of, um, um, has a number of uh, specificities, such as um, p-edit, works with words of 32 bits. So always offsets are aligned to 32 bits. Um, so, the driver needs, uh, so, so the driver needs to, to look at the mask to infer what part of the mangle what is going to happen. So that is expressed in network by order. So in case you want to match 
so source port or D port. So you, you playing with the mask, you know, the driver knows if, if you want to mangle the mask or the mangle, mangle this, this, this source port or the destination port, which um, might be, might, depending on the driver, it might result in extra complexity. So there are up to, and also you need up to four actions to mangle one single IPv, IPv6 address. So it's a bit of go back and forth. So it's like you want one part of the 32 bits of the IP address, and then you get the action, the driver's configured, but then another action follows up, and then another one. So it's four times the same thing, when, but it could, it could be done in one single go. So there is a patch available, basically just to, to change offset alignment to eight bits. And so, so the driver gets offset at, at byte level. And also, um, this code adjusts the offset and the length based on the mask. Um, uh, so far, there is one problem with that patch set. At least um, there was there was one uh, there was one developer on the mail list basically telling that um, it, with the approach I was following, it's not possible anymore to mangle one single byte of the TCP port, either source or destination. So I have to fix that. I don't know the use case for that, but. He he has one, so I'm going to fix it. So, and then the other use case um, for this flow offload APIs is the contract flow table bypass. So, this um, the idea of this infrastructure is to provide an alternative fast path to to the classic forwarding path. So there is a software plane um, that implements this new flow table object. So it's this representation is independent from hardware, so you, you could you could use it to speed up speed up uh, forwarding um, purely in software. So basically, the idea is that once a packet gets in um, to ingress, just um, there is a lookup in the in the flow table. It's basically a hash table to check if there is a five tuple matching exact five tuple matching in the in the hash table. If there is one, then we know already what to do with the packet. We know the destination port, the destination device. So, so we just basically take the packet and also decrement TTL, apply, man, apply NAT mangling, and, and so on. And then packet is placed in the in the right in the right net device. So um, and then and then for the forward net filter chain, the idea is that you have an action that is flow offload that allows you to tell what traffic is going to be placed in, in, into this um, contract flow table at the ingress, at the ingress hook. So you it looks. So this is this is basically what I've been describing. Is that for each packet extract, the idea is to extract the tuple and then perform the look at the flow table. If there is a miss, the packet follows. The classic forwarding path. If there is a heat, attach the route, apply NAT, decrement TTL, and then send that by a neighbor XMIN. There is a few exceptions in case that packet is over MTU or IP options are available. In that case, the packet needs to follow the classic forwarding path. Um, there is a tear down state that is basically if if the flow table sees a TCP reset or theme packet, the um, the entry is the entry is scheduled to be removed from the flow table, and the the, the, the packets, the, the packets after reset, and basically the the connection tracking takes over control on the entry. Is that it's it's basically a way to to release early resources from from the flow table, and there is also a garbage collector in case that the the, the flow table doesn't see a packet after n seconds. Currently, it's quite aggressive; it's only 30 seconds, but that can be changed, and also can that timeout can be disposed. So the idea is that if after n seconds uh, you don't see any packet um, matching an entry in the flow table, what it happens is that the entry expires and is remo removed from the flow table, but it, it, it is basically hand over back to the connection tracking. So there is a pickup um, timeout, the kick is in, and, and the entry is set to establish a state, and after that, after that timeout, then the entry expires in the connection tracking. So the way to configure this is with one single rule. You specify um, the devices that are part of the, of the contract flow table. 
And then there is an action from the forward chain that allows you to spe specify what flows are going to be placed into the, into the flow table. Another change that happened in the, connect in the contract flow table is that um, before um, in the initial approach, you have to uh, the 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 the, um, the flow table code need, needed to the flow table action needed to see packets in both directions, but that doesn't work for UDP flows going in one single direction. So it's basically once the connection tracking entry is confirmed. So once the first packet has fully fully went through the 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 the, 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 the networking stack. Then after that, the next packet that then follows the, the fast path. So there is only one, uh, once one packet follows the, the entire um, classic forwarding path, then, then the, um, the flow table um, path kicks in. But anyway, this is configurable. So it's through policy you specify when you add the entry to the flow table. So it's, it could be after 10 seconds, after inspecting the payload once the packet has been the, the TCP flow have, has been established and you see some traffic on the payload, so it's it's whenever whenever you you want whenever you whenever the user decide decides to it, the, the flow the entry is added to the flow table, so it's not there is no predefined behavior. When you instantiate the flow table in, like in this rule, is that where you could specify the timeout being shorter? There? Yeah, exactly. It will be an option. Yeah. So the contract flow table by path um, in hardware, basically the idea um, is to, so because all this flow rule API and flow blog infrastructure, the, all this flow of offload um, API that is now available, the idea is to avoid um, basically to consolidate code, provide one single unified representation to the driver. It would make no sense to use it for the contract flow table. So the idea is that basically a contract entry is basically, basically represented by a, like an exact five tuple matching. And then you could use just the action redirect to specify what destination port. So it's like it's like a rule, but the difference is that th that rule is added from from the packet path via work queue. So just to, to make sure that the configuration happens from user user context, we need this to happen from the work queue. The flow table uh, software plane makes sure that this looks looks consistent to the user because th because the work queue takes time to kick to kick in and to, um, to configure the hardware. There is a, a little bit of time that packets that are already offload will still, f will still be seen by software, but they will follow the software flow table path. And then once, once the, the hardware is configured, then the host, the CPU is stop seeing packets and it, they basically follow the hardware. So, if using the software, oh sorry, <laughs> when using the software auto pass, uh, statistics and so on, is it still correct? Sorry, statistics. So, statistics. 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 Are they correct? Statistics. Statistics. Packet number. Yeah, packet, packet counter. counter. Yeah. Are they maintained when using your? No, they are not currently maintained. No, they are not. And if if so, basically no, no. Um, no, the, the idea of once, once the hardware offload is in place so far, what has been discussed is that because the hardware can keep counters on that, would be to synchronize the, the contract counters. So because, because the entry is exposed, um, is exposed with an offload label in the connection tracking, we could, just, we could just synchronize those counters to the contract entry. You're kind of assuming of it. <laughs> You're kind of assuming a very smart switch. If you look at the little ones in Soho switches, they don't have counters per flow. They don't have counter per flow. We can just expose these, all these features that the hardware has <laughs> depending on what they offer. So it's, it's not like... So one, one, all, thing, yeah. one thing you usually see in this kind of situation is make the default be the least common denominator, which would be not supporting the counters, right? And then in the rule, the user could say, I want counter synchronization, and then you could fail the rule yeah. insertion 
if you had a device like that, otherwise you exactly. just... Exactly. Right. Exactly. And All this is going to happen from the control plane. So the user can specify, I want counters, and then you can say, no, I don't support counters, I'm sorry. Or you could even say, oh, please describe what this flow table can do. And then the hardware will provide some description of what is available. So I can do these things. So the user doesn't even know, does, knows what to do, doesn't even know how, doesn't need to be trying, picking what is available. Almost. Isn't a counter is something uh, necessary for connection tracking? Without a counter, you won't be able to know if the connection is alive or not. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's, that's the point. When, when you get things to the hardware, it's a bit like you are a bit blind, right? So you have no information about what is going on with the flow. So having the counters will help. But if there are hardware that don't support this, so just doing this. But, uh, in the case of the more less sophisticated devices, do they have like an access bit that gets cleared occasionally or something like this, so you could tell if it's alive, it's been recently touched? Or so, for example, on the Marvel switches, you'd implement this in the TCAM, and you'd see a TCAM rule has been hit recently. You can see that. So, so we could do something even without the counters to keep the engine yeah, alive. Yeah. Yeah, so then it could, be it could be exposed that way to, to give a hint to the user. Thanks. I have been a bit fast. That's OK. So if you have any more questions, otherwise. Please, please stand up. Uh, is there any overhead associated with calling these APIs that you are better off uh, have uh, you are better off having CPU process the package rather than offloading it to hardware? It, um, so you mean if 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 it would be, would be better to do it in software, right? Yeah, it depends. I mean, it depends. There are devices that um, that are not designed to to cope with. Um, with the CPU they have, they, they are not designed to cope with, with the um, uh, bit rate that they can, they can achieve with the net devices. So they are, uh, for big switches, for torch switches, they have very small uh, CPU just to deal with basically with control plane traffic. So in that case, it's not, because, because the way the device has been designed, it's, there is no way they can cope with, with that bit rate. And, and it also happened with smaller switches that I have seen. So they have CPU that can only cope with 100 megabits, but they have a one, one gigabit ports. So the, and the other situation is where your time is dominated by cycling entries in and out of the hardware, programming and, and inserting, adding and deleting. If that's the dominant <coughs> operation, it could be expensive compared to just software. It depends. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely, I mean, software is always more flexible than hardware. So at some point, it's, it's basically in a situation where you don't have these kind of devices, it's a bit like a trade-off, right? So you could just decide to push a, f a few, a number of flows to, to hardware to, sp to speed process. And then if you want to make uh, uh, more inspection on, on, that, on those flows, you can keep doing that on, or for example, for example, in contract, you have full validation of the TCP uh, s sequence, right, the TCP flow. So in that case, that it's, you, you, you want to keep that, that in software, right? So, and if you want just to, to um, reduce security a bit while speeding up forwarding, you can just place some of those flows into hardware. So it's a bit like. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much, Pablo. Thank you.